Welcome to Brookdale Newsmakers, your source for what's happening in and around, around your campus. I'm your host, Laura Vetter. The Brookdale Big Band is celebrating their 30th year of performing the best of jazz and swing. With me today is Joseph Arcurso, the professor of music here at Brookdale and also the founder and leader of the band. Talk more about their upcoming performance in April. Welcome so to the program. Thank you. Um, so let me congratulate you first on three decades of successful music. It's right. such an accomplishment. <laughs> mm. um, so tell us a little bit about the history of the big band. When I came here in 1984, I um, decided that um, Brookdale needed a big band because the um, big band, that genre as we know it, which was America's popular music in the 1930s, is such an important contribution by America to the world cultural scene. It is recognized worldwide. There are big bands in every major European capital, and it's, it's such an important part of our musical legacy. I decided that it was important to preserve it and propagate it. Uh, and in that end, and, and I've always been a, 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 a very big fan of, of the big band, and to that end, I, I, I started the Brookdale Big Band. We started with a couple of students, and then we opened it up to the community, and it um, obviously has been very popular because it's been thriving for the past 30 years. Excellent. Um, so what are the details of your 30th anniversary show? It's simply uh, another concert. Um, we're bringing in a couple of uh, guest artists. We're bringing in a student, um, Robert Braga, who um, has an amazing um, voice. He sounds like Tony Bennett. And um, we always like to include students in the band, and he's coming in. And then, of course, we will have our regular array of um, very fine players. The band consists of some of the best. It has evolved into a what started as a, a student band into a professional showcase for players in Monmouth County. There are all sorts of very well-known musicians in the band, like our bassist Gary Maserati, who's in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. He was Les Paul's bass player for 30 years. How impressive, yeah. Yes, yes, and then we have Joe Masello, who played on Broadway for 30 years, and, and people of that ilk. So the band has become a, a, a very high-end musical entity, and, um, and it, 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 it's a, a very good and authentic replicator of that music, which was known as swing, which again was America's popular music in, in the 1930s. It started early 1930s with Duke Ellington and Count Basie and, 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 and continued right up until about the end of the Second World War. And, and, and during that period, of course, um, um, for, for students around here, it would be their, their grandmothers and grandfathers or great-grandmothers mm. and great-grandfathers who, who swung and danced to that music during that period. And uh, what are the um, ticket and uh, date um, details for the show? The concert's on April 23rd at 8 o'clock. It's in the Brookdale PAC. And tickets are available um, through the box office. Um, um, you could just go to the Brookdale website and, and, and go to the box office and, and you could find out information there. And um, there are tickets available for general public, um, generic students, Brookdale students and seniors, and um, they're priced accordingly. And what are some of the selections that you'll be performing this year at the show? We always play a lot of Count Basie. Obviously, he's um, a native son of this area. He Absolutely. grew up in Red Bank, and, uh, and uh, there will be plenty of Count Basie uh, repertoire on the, um, in the concert. And then we always, of course, will do some Duke Ellington. And then we do a lot of standard repertoire. We always like to include something by Benny Goodman, which features our outstanding clarinetist, Greg Grispard. And, um, and then we'll do some more concert style. You see, big band music is sort of divided into uh, two pieces. It, um, there are the pieces that people danced to in the 1930s. And then as it, it, its history went along, it became a more sophisticated ensemble. And a lot of time the music was written um, strictly for the ensemble, for listening, for, to, to allow for the virtuosity of arrangers and the, the way they orchestrate and the performers and the way they could perform it. Mm -hmm. Some of the later big bands like the Stan Kenton Band and the Thad Jones Mill Lewis Band, um, they, they were not dance bands, they were performing bands. It was their hope that big band music could evolve into its own genre of concert music. It has somewhat succeeded. I mean, there are, we, we, there are big band concerts that are done. Very few people do big band concerts anymore. Um, for, for dancing, unless 
the, the crowd is, the median age of the crowd is 85, um, <laughs> uh, because those are the people who, who dance to mm -hmm. that stuff. But there are several concerts here and there, and especially so in Europe, where this stuff is really appreciated, where, because they have their own musical legacy and they're locked into Beethoven and Mozart, they could appreciate this genre and, and, and the specifics of it. And, 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 and in countries like England, France, and Germany, this music is, is still very, um, in the Scandinavian countries, it, it, it's still very much active. More so, un unfortunately, than in, the, in this country where it was, uh, it, where it originated. Um, well, I hope you break a leg at the show, and thank you thank so you. much for coming on and telling us about your program. Um, for more information or to watch us on demand, you can log on to brookdalecc.edu. I'm Laura Vetter, and thank you for joining us on Newsmakers.